Hi, this is Trenisha Cottrell, and I might look a little different. So I was getting ready for bed, and I was like praying. I was on my knees. I was praying, and I don't know why I'm divulging so much information, but I was praying before bed, and I was like, okay, God, guide me where you need me to go. Show me what it is that you want for me to do, and I'll do it. And God was like, go make a video. So I'm here. And honestly, I always say I don't know what I'm going to say, or I used to say I don't have anything to say, but if God's guiding me, he's going to tell me everything that it is that I need to say. He's going to guide my vocal system. He's going to guide my lips. He's going to make sure that my mind, my spirit is right, that I'm saying the things that it is that I need to say, that he needs for me to say. And so when I was sitting there, earlier I did a video, I was at an event, I was at this thing at um, the skating rink. And as I was there, I was like, oh my goodness, I have to do the video. And I always try to do the video at 9 p.m. because I'm doing the 30 day challenge. So I'm doing 30 days of purpose. And today was day 26, I believe. And I haven't done confessionals in a long time. And I know I look so different because I literally just did my three-step skincare program and was getting ready for bed. And then it was like, okay, and at first I was like, God, I got put on jewelry, I got, <laughs> which sounds so ridiculous. And I'm just like, I don't have any makeup on. And I know on camera, it's going to look so crazy because, <laughs> because it'll show like every single thing, you know, but this is me. This is who I am. This is what it is. I can't, I think it's some, it does something different to you when you're raw, when you don't have makeup on, when you're not all made up when you're not doing extra stuff and this I just slipped this on I really don't need this I could take this off I just have it on just to have it on but <laughs> it's something about doing a video raw that just makes you feel open you don't have makeup to hide behind you don't have the clothes you don't have anything to hide behind it's just you and this camera just you being yourself and you know I have been trying to figure out exactly where God wants me to go and in the past, I would be like, okay, God, I'm going to do this, this, and this. Where do you want me to be? And I would be so busy doing so many different things. I wouldn't be allowing God to just do what it is that he needs to do. I wouldn't be allowing God to just move in my life. I would be still enough to wait for direction. I would be doing so much that God wouldn't have a chance to be able to do anything that I needed him to do. And this past week, God has really been working on the inside of me, showing me rest he's showing me rest in a whole nother way like he still wants me to move he still wants me to do things but now I don't feel like I have to do everything I feel like I just need to be obedient and focus on God I feel like instead of me hustling and bustling and doing the most I'm sorry my eye was itching <laughs> I think it's because I was taking off my makeup and some of it might must have gotten my eye oh yeah my eyelash well <laughs> yeah but I really have been just letting God just take the lead like okay God what is it that you need for me to do and instead of me running to do everything having my hand in everything trying to do the most I've really been just taking time with God like really intentionally instead of maybe watching the one show that I watch every once in a while, or sometimes I try to watch one every day. Like when I get home from work, after I finish working on a few things and all this stuff, I would go and I would watch one 40 minute TV show. And that would be like my thing that I do before I get in the shower and then go to bed. And now I have just been, instead of me doing so much to try to because I, I always would feel like I was so behind, like, look at all of these people and the things that they're doing. And, you know, even though we like to say we don't compare ourselves, sometimes if we're not growing as fast as we want to grow, if our business isn't moving as fast as it or developing as, as quickly as we want it to, or we're not getting the traction that we want, or we're not in the relationship that we want to be in, or in the job that we want to be in, or whatever else, we just start to do this, like, picking thing with our life we start to pick out all of these things that we think that we don't like that are all necessary 
we're like, well, this person got a promotion. Why didn't I get a promotion? Why am I still at this job? We look at this thing that this person's doing and it's like, okay, well, they're doing the same thing I'm doing. So why is their business prospering and my business is stagnant? It's not doing anything. And then you start to second guess yourself and you start to feel like, okay, God, am I even supposed to be here? Is this, am I still in the right position? This is where you told me to move before. And it's so funny because in our head, we have this idea of what it's going to look like when we move, when God tells us to move. We're like, when I do this, like, I'm going to be completely transparent in this moment. I don't know if this video is going to go up or anything, but God told me to be here. So I'm here. But being totally transparent. When I first wrote this book, I was like, New York Times bestseller. God told me to write this book. It's going to be on the New York Times bestseller. It's going to do this. It's going to do that. It's going to open up these avenues. I'm going to have speaking engagements. I'm going to do all of these things. And it did help with a few things, but nothing compared to what in my mind was going to happen. You know, I was not on the New York Times bestseller. I did not have more clients because of this book. I did have one person reach out because of the book and a lot of people did tell me that the story helped them and it's funny how when things don't happen the way that we plan we feel like God messed up or God didn't do something for our life or that we did something wrong because it's not happening the way that we want it to happen but we're right on plan we're right on time we're exactly in the part of the plan where God knew we would be in this moment we are doing all the things that God intended for us to do in this moment to get us prepared for the next season. And we feel like, for me, sometimes I feel like, okay, maybe I'm not doing anything. Like sometimes I'm I'm in a waiting season so long that I'm like, maybe I'm not doing enough. Maybe I'm not doing this to the best of my ability. Maybe I'm not where God wants me to be. Maybe, maybe I didn't do this right. Maybe I was supposed to be, stay longer here. Maybe God told me to do this amount or do this thing but he really wanted me to do more maybe God wanted me to not go here instead of going here or maybe like some decisions in my life that I make I'm like okay well maybe I should have checked with God on this thing because now I don't know if that was the right move for my life and we get so hard on ourselves as if God needs to do things on our time or as if there is a, we are writing our own story. Like we are like, oh, by 18, I'm going to be on my own in this house with this car, with this thing. And for the most part, when you do make a goal, most of those things happen. But sometimes none of the things happen the way that you thought they were going to happen. When I graduated high school, I was like, I'm going to college. I'm going to go to this this school nearby and I'm going to I'm going to be there. I'm going to do this with my life. I'm going to do that. And at first I was like, I'm going to go to New York and I'm going to go to the Fashion Institute, you know, and I'm just going to do all of these things after high school. I'm going to I'm going to travel there. I'm going to live in New York. I'm going to rough it out. You know, I'm going to live on campus or in an apartment. And then I'm going to graduate. I'm going to work New York Fashion Week. I'm going to work my own, you know, fashion designs. I'm going to do all of these things. And I'm going to model, you know, in some different magazines or in different locations for whatever it was. And then I'm going to, I'm also going to, while I'm in school for fashion, get my psychology degree. Like that was my plan, like a duo thing. But I was going to learn like patterns and, you know, different color schemes and all, all the stuff, right? I had this idea in my head of the things that I was going to do in my life. And when I first got into college, I ended up getting pregnant with my daughter. And I something inside of me was like, just don't stop. Like, just get your degree. Do what you got to do. Just finish. And I, this was before I started believing in myself before anything. I was just like, I'm just going to do it. I have to do what I have to do. And I know that I want to get a degree. I know that I want to be doing something. And so I I went to school at a community college. And then I ended up transferring to a university. And I just took online courses. I didn't go to the location because it was in a different state. And when you... I don't know if they do this for all schools, but with this school, 
I could go online courses and because it was online, I didn't have to pay out school tuition. I could just pay, pay in school tuition. And so I did that. And while I was in school, of course, I got student loans. I, <laughs> I did the whole thing, the whole American dream with the student loans and the car payments and everything. And it's just like life had a whole nother plan. And when I was younger, I really felt like I knew everything. Like, I'm just going to do things like this. I'm just going to do this this way. I'm going to do this that way. And I had no idea how life, that life was going to happen the way it's been happening. I always tell like this little, it's not an inside joke, but I always tell this story about how if God would have came to me and said, you're going to be in a 15 year relationship where you are going to really lose yourself and you're going to really go through all of these things in your life and you're going to have a child and you're going to I mean all of the things that I went through in my life were mainly because of me because I really was a know-it-all I really felt like nobody could tell me anything you know that young mindset and if God would have told me I had to go through all of those things to find myself, I probably would have been like, no, I'm okay. I'm going to pass on it. <laughs> and can we be real at saying that? Because sometimes we feel like, oh, yeah, I totally understand. I totally would have, like, we make it seem like we got it all together. And God got it all together. We are just human beings. Like, yes, we can do the best that we can. Yes, we can be the best version of ourselves. But God's plan is the best plan. Nobody writes a story or a love story like God's. So why do we keep trying to make things happen in relationships? Like I see so many people doing the most and it's, and I'm not saying you got to be at home alone and you're just going to meet somebody at home. I'm saying, and I'm not going to go into a backstory on that, but you really do have to get out of the house. <laughs> you got, you got to be places to be seen. You got to be serving. You got to be intentional with your life. So people can find you. You can't just expect the person to just drop out of thin air. Yes, God knows your location. I say that a lot. But I also don't want people to take that the wrong way and think, okay, I'm going to just stay at home by myself, not work on myself. And then God is just going to send this perfect guy at my doorstep because out of nowhere, I'm just going to let a stranger in my house. Like, unless like it's like some type of movie where the person is looking for directions. And even then, like, you don't know this person why are you letting them in your house but anyways I digress <laughs> but you will have to be out and about and you should be serving because that's the best way to meet someone when you're doing something intentional with your own life when you are focusing on yourself and not focusing on I gotta meet this person I gotta meet this person I gotta meet this person I got like don't spend so much time focusing on a person that you forget that you are a person. You know, I always say that to myself, just like as a reminder sometimes, because sometimes we we have this idea in our mind due to, you know, Disney or other movies or whatever, romantic comedies, whatever you want to call it, right? We have this idea in our head, like, I'm going to meet this person and I'm going to be complete and everything that I have is going to be perfect and I'm never going to cry again. I'm never going to get angry again or sad or emote at all. I'm just going to become this robot who's always happy. Like, <laughs> can we be real with ourselves and acknowledging the fact that that is not going to fulfill you? Yes, it's a blessing to have your kingdom spouse in your life. And yes, you guys can both be in purpose, but you have to know that that person can never be God. When I first learned that, <laughs> when I first rededicated my life to God, I was like, what's the point of being with anybody then if I'm going to be good by myself anyways? And then God really taught me a lot about myself. He taught me what my purpose was and how me working with someone else would be able to expand my purpose. And it's not that I would need that person. It's that God is saying that because I find fulfillment in him, that this could be an asset. Now, if my fulfillment was in a man, then it would be more like ideal idolatry than a blessing. It would be, in, instead of it being something, bon a bonus that God is adding to my life, it would be something that I'd idolize. 
which isn't God at all. God would never want to send you something that's going to make you forget about him. You know, God really wants you to be all in. Right now, I don't know where this is coming from. I'm just on this video. <laughs> but I've been, while I've been learning, while God has been teaching me, I have really been learning how to humble myself. I've really been learning it's not about me. Like, yes, God told me to write the book and no, it's not New York Times bestseller because it was about making God's name great and not mine. I'm a person, I'm a, I'm a vessel being used for the glory of the kingdom of God. That's it. I am not, you know, I'm not someone's idol. Can I be used as an example of the kingdom? Yes. But that doesn't mean that any person should ever idolize me. You know, it's, it's great to inspire people. It's great to motivate people. It's great for people to see the fruit of your labor and to see the way that God is blessing you. That is amazing. But that is not, the point is not for me to become the thing that people want to be. The, the point is for me to be everything God created me to be so that I can add to the kingdom of God. I, I'm so grateful that God hasn't allowed my business to grow quickly that he's allowed me to be able to work on myself in this season to really learn my triggers to really learn things that I needed to work on within myself to really allow me to see that the person that he, that God has for me is not going to be the person that I think it's going to be it's going to be the it's going to be the person that God told me it is it's going to be the person who God confirms that it is it is not, I'm going to tell an example and I'm only saying this because this is like my idea. This isn't like a God thing. This is like a, in my head, this is how it is. I feel like if you're the type of person who only dates one type of person, who is, I'm just going to throw some characteristic traits out there, who has a six pack with uh, six figures and six foot, who is driving some kind of nice vehicle, who is Caucasian, Asian, whatever it is, right? I feel like God, <laughs> God is so funny that, okay, that might be your preference, but God is going to make sure that you have something that you like. He's not just going to give you someone and be like, deal with it. This is my child too. <laughs> I feel like if you are the type of person who your preference is, you know, another ethnicity or something like that, God is probably going to send you somebody who does not have a six pack. They might have a four pack. They are going to do well for themselves. They might not have six figures. They might have something else. Sorry. <laughs> and or five. You know, and so you're like, oh, but the person might make five figures and then you move up to six, seven figures, eight figures, who knows, whatever. But the person that you're getting is everything that you need. They're a person who's attentive. They're a person who cares about your well-being. They're a person who is grace for you. And I, I think God gives you what you need, not what you want. You have this idea in your head of what the person's going to look like, sound like, talk like. But until God shows you who that person is, and it's so funny, God has given me some ideas about some things in my life. And some of the things that God has shown me is like, wow, I never would have thought of it like that. I never would have thought of this job being a blessing and me being able to grow and learn how to be a good steward of the things that I have for me to be able to learn to budget all over again, to be better with my finances for me to really appreciate certain characteristic traits and people and that's the thing that God wants to give me in a kingdom spouse you know I never thought that that God would show me okay you're gonna want someone who has patience or who not patience in like a they'll sit there for eight hours but the type of person who speaks up for themselves and who would make me feel safe enough to be able to divulge information about myself that I don't feel comfortable sharing with most people you know 
type of person who will take that type of time, who will make time for me because God told them that I'm I'm their wife. The type of person who cares about other people. Like really, truly cares about helping other people the same way that I do. The type of person who has these things that they want in their life that to other people it's like, what? That's crazy. That's silly. But to me, it's like, that's exactly what I would need. You know, not what I want. That's exactly what I would need. I would want to be, I would need to be in a relationship that brings me joy and not just happiness. I had a choice in my past to choose a person who was going to make me happy, but I wouldn't have joy. And God showed me, like he asked me this question, do I I just want to be happy or do I want to have joy in my relationship? I'm going to try not to cry because, you know, God can kind of show you like little bits and pieces of the things of how your life is going to look. And it really makes you feel like, why is God doing all of this for me? You know? Woo, I'm so sorry. <laughs> And when God had asked me, do you want happiness or joy? At first I was, I I liked this guy. And the guy who I liked, God said he would have made me happy, but I would not have joy in that relationship. And it was so hard to let go. I was just like, God, I really like this guy. Like, really? <laughs> He's like, after everything I've shown you, would you, if you only choose happiness, then that's not me. Like, I'm not, God didn't give me a no, but he gave me like a, this will be your choice. It's not going to be my choice. You know, this will be something that you want, but it won't be something that I graced. It won't be something that I have just for you. And it's something about when you know that God is there with you, that allows you to feel more confident, that allows you to, to walk in it with confidence, with this knowing. I don't know how to describe it, but I got to do this because every time I put like chapstick on, it just looks weird. It never looks like. And you can't even, I don't have that much of this left because this is like my favorite one and it was not expensive. It was like $3 or something. I don't know, but I guess I got to do this because I'm one of those people. This is wet and wild and the color is, wow, Scorpio, really? Oh, it's got an M on it and stuff. I guess it's one of those things. I didn't even know. I just like it because of the purple. But anyways, yeah. And so I was like, God, I really like this person. But I wouldn't have had the confidence. I wouldn't have felt like when you know that God is in a decision, when you know that God is in something that you're doing, it really just makes you feel so good about the choices that you're making. You don't have to second guess yourself. You don't have to feel like, what if I do this? What if I do that? Maybe I'm not doing this right. Maybe I'm not doing that right. But when God's in it, I just feel like, okay. And regardless of what I do, I know God's hand is in everything. I know even if I say the wrong thing, if I do the wrong thing, if I if I don't do something 100% perfect, this person is a grace for me. I'm grace for this person. This person will allow me to be able to be myself. They're not going to make me feel like I have to be anybody else. They're not going to... I don't want to say misconstrue all of the things that I say because some people... You know, sometimes you say things and you don't mean it that way and it comes off wrong or whatever else. I get that. But this person wasn't going to make me feel like everything I said was wrong. <laughs> they weren't going to not see my value. The person the person that God has grace for me was not, not going to see my value or not take the time to really hear what it is that I had to say. 
without feeling like I was just trying to intentionally hurt someone really knowing that okay well what else is going on like they would want to dig because they would care about my well-being they would care about me enough to really listen you know and I told God I said I choose joy over happiness in a relationship and God showed me this person saying and God just showed me what I needed to know and every time I had a question about something God confirmed when it was him he let me know that okay if if this is something that's minute to other people, but it matters to me, God is saying, I know that that matters to you and I'm going to make sure you have that in this kingdom spouse. Just as important as it is to you, it's going to be important to them as well. Because I grace them for you. You don't have to try to explain why this matters to you. Like things that feed my soul. <laughs> are the things that this person will have. I know, like, like I know without a shadow of a doubt. And I know it sounds so weird because I'm not with this person. I know it sounds so weird because they may or may not know now that I'm their wife. But I'm waiting on God's timing. I don't want to do anything prematurely. Like I'm, I know you're like, okay, so you're around some guy who's never made a move, who's never talked, try to talk to you or whatever. And you just know this is your husband. Usually if you hear the stories about people, they knew right away that it was their wife and they came up and they were together ever since or whatever else happened. But listen, my story is not their story. <laughs> my ways are not God's ways. My thoughts are not God's thoughts. So whenever God sees fit is when it's going to happen. I have nothing to do with it. I just need to be myself and be the best version of me so that I can walk in faith, knowing that I'm doing all the things that God intends for me to do for my life. That's it. Person will come when God's ready. Even if they know right now, if God says it's not time, don't come for me early. Wait on God. I don't want to rush anything. I'm not looking to like just jump into something that I don't, I just want to make sure I'm patient. I want to make sure that I don't just make a quick decision. Yes, I have God's approval. You know, I may have God's approval. Yes, God has shown me all the things that I need to know. Anything that I had questions about, God has shown me, confirmed everything. Like in, in areas of my life where he knew I was going to feel like a little insecure about, not about a person, but just about some of the things that I've done in the past, some of the decisions that I've made and, you know, my, my mind, my, my thought process and just little things that I've done before. And I was kind of like, well, what about this? What if I don't do this like this? Or what if this is like this? And it's not about the person. It was more about me trying to be perfect. And then I had to learn that I don't need to be perfect. I just need to be willing to listen to God. I had to learn that I don't need to be anybody else but myself. I had to learn that it's not about me all the time. I had to learn that not everybody's going to see my value. Only the person that God chose to see my value is going to see it. But I have to see it first. I heard this quote one time and it really blessed my life. The person said there are going to be so many people <laughs> that you meet that will not see your value. They're not going to know your worth. They're not going to know you 
can't be one of them. That thing touched me to my soul. It's like, it's so true. Because it's, you're not meant for everybody to see your value. People may use you. People may treat you a certain type of way. People may do whatever it is that they do in their life. Like, as a woman, I understand that. I definitely understand how it feels to have people want something from you. I just... I'm I'm taking my time because I want to make sure I check on God, check with God for things that I want to say because I don't want to say anything prematurely and I want to make sure that I'm following God and it's not just me. I everything that I do, I want God to be in it. I'm not trying to do something just because I look good doing this. Like, oh, if I have this, then all of a sudden people will listen. It's not about the people, it's about God. I don't care if <laughs> Like I, the stuff that I used to care about when I was in middle school, the things that I would, I would think of when I first became single, when I first was out and about, I really don't care about any of those things anymore. I don't care about meeting a guy and thinking, oh, he seems like a great, I don't know this guy. <laughs> like I used to, in my head, like just fantasize or think like, oh, this guy's going to be like this, this, and this, like, because he seems like a nice guy and most guys that I used to be interested in, it would be like the guys that would just be so blunt, like so blunt. And they would just say whatever was on their mind. And I would just be like, at least I don't have to wonder what he's thinking. <laughs> I know that sounds ridiculous, but to me it was like, okay. And now I could care less. Like, I'm not saying I don't care about the person's well being. Of course, I want everyone to be successful and succeed and all of those things. But I don't feel like it's my job to prove to any man, whether he's kind, mean, whatever his characteristic traits are, whatever, that I am who God created me to be. I don't have to prove that I'm a smart, intelligent woman who is about that God life, who just loves the people around me, like who really loves helping people and serving, who really has no trouble being checked about things like do I like hearing it not all the time but sometimes it's necessary most of the times it's necessary to hear the truth for somebody to check you to keep you in line to keep you you know on the right track I don't want a bunch of yes people just telling me what I want to hear I want people to be honest with me so I could grow and become a better person my job is to make sure I'm pleasing to God and I can do that by being around people who see something in me that I don't see in myself, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. That way I can become everything God created me to be. I can't grow on my own. I, God can mold things off of me, break things off of me, but I have to really execute it. I have to be willing to put feet to pavement and just stand flat-footed in, in faith. I have to be like, if someone's like, well, you're not being very compassionate. I can't just say, well, that's your problem. I do this, this, and this. No, if they're saying that I'm not being compassionate, then I could say, you know, that was never my intention. I'm really sorry that I made you feel that way. That was, I would not, I'm not the type of person who just is inconsiderate of other people's feelings, whatever it is, like humble yourself real quick, especially when you know that you hurt somebody, just humble yourself and acknowledge that you're wrong. Even if you that wasn't your intention because you have to empathize with the person to let them know that they matter to you. It's so weird because because I know <laughs> because I God's because of God's promises and some of the things that I know. When I meet people, <laughs> can I say this? When I meet people, I'm not like, oh, I got to prove that I am a, a honest person. Like, no, I'm an honest person, period. I don't have to prove that to anybody. <laughs> when I meet people and they're like, oh, well, this, this, and this, or let's say they, they are in, inconsistent with calling or something, or they, they're not a person of their word. Like, I don't feel like I need to try to 
shape the person into the person I want them to be. Like, if they're inconsistent, that's on them. I don't have anything to do with it. It's not my job. God didn't put me on earth and assign me to this person to make them consistent. He assigned me to my mission, to my purpose, and that's where I'm going to be. I don't have time to waste. I don't know how many minutes, hours, days I got on this earth, and I can't waste it trying to prove to somebody or teach somebody something that's that's not my job or my responsibility. I don't have anything to do with someone else's choices in life. That's what they choose to do, you know, and I used to take it so personal back in the day, like, oh, well, maybe if I did this, maybe if I did that, listen, if I do something wrong, I acknowledge it. Other than that, I keep it moving. I don't have time. <laughs> I really don't have any time to waste. I, I gave up too much of my time to things that only satisfied me. I can no longer do that. I have to be satisfying to God. I have to make sure that I'm pleasing to God, that I'm I'm really being the woman that he created me to be. And a lot of the things I had to learn through past relationships or whatever else or life experiences. I'm glad that God slowed me down to teach me these things so that when the person comes to get me, I will be ready. I don't want to give them the half version of me. That's me doing a disservice to myself and them and God. How could I ever show people what waiting patiently with a servant's heart, with a joyful heart, be like? If I'm sitting here moping around, not serving, being dissatisfied with some of the things that happen in my life. And no, I'm not always happy with everything that's going on in my life, but I try to make the best of every situation. I try to always look at the bright side. I'm that person, probably super annoying, but I do it because I want to show God that I'm a good steward for with the things that he's given me, whether it's more or less. That way, when he's ready for me to go into the next season. He'll know that I did everything with the best of intentions, with a good heart posture. That's what my my goal is, to just be joyous. I want to be everything, everything God created me to be. Nothing more, nothing less. I'm not trying to do anything more than that. I I always feel like, oh my gosh, I'm so close to this person being a part of my life. And in the past, I would get scared. I would start to do things wrong intentionally so I can make it more time. So I'd be like, see God, I still need to work this thing out and get this thing off of me. See God, I'm not ready because of this. Like I would intentionally do things or not do things just so that I wouldn't be ready because I was so afraid. I was just like, I don't know if I could ever be vulnerable. I don't know if I ever want to be with somebody. I don't know. And I had to really repent for all of the things that I said about relationships in the past because sometimes we block our own blessings. You don't understand that your words have power. It's not like when I grew up, when they would say sticks and stones may break your bones, but words will never hurt you. We know words hurt, hurt people. Like, it's damaging, it sticks with you, you remember that almost for the rest of your life. Like, we're not going to pretend like (laughs) words aren't powerful. The power of the tongue is the most, one of the most powerful tools on your body. So, I'm not going to pretend that that is a thing. I just... Mm -mm Mm-mm-mm. I stopped making excuses. I stopped pretending like I'm not ready because of this and making making up reasons why I, God can't give me the person. I really was like, well, see, God, I haven't worked on this. See, God, I haven't made this amount in my business. See, God, this isn't growing this way. See, God, I still have to work on, and it'll be something ridiculous, small, whatever. Like, I had like this spot on me or, or whatever, and I was like, God, see, I can't be in a relationship with this one spot on my skin, like this blemish. And I'm like, (laughs) I know God was probably just having like the funniest time ever laughing at me, just making up things and reasons why I couldn't be with somebody. And then I got to the point where I felt like, okay, God, no more excuses. I repent for saying that I don't ever want to be in a relationship again. I do. 
God, I repent for saying how ridiculous it seems for somebody to truly love you the right way because the person that you have grace for me is going to do that in Jesus name. God, I, I apologize for making jokes and making it making light of a situation when really you were trying to teach me something so that I could prepare for this man that you have grace for me. God, I, I had to say, God, I repent for the cynicism and the negative thoughts behind you being able to bring someone to me even after all of the things that I've done. I really had to just look myself in the mirror and say, the past is the past. God already forgave you. You need to get rid of it. You need to let it go. And why wouldn't God feel like he would want to give you something? And even if I couldn't see it in the past, I don't know more than God. And God keeps his promises. I don't know the day or the hour, but I do know I want it on God's time. I do know that with all of the things that God has taught me, <laughs> it's turned me into a way better person. It really has changed my heart posture. Like my, I feel like my heart is ready for the person. I feel like, like the things in my life feel like they're lining up for the person to come. It's so weird. I don't know if most people feel this or what, but it's like, So I got, I'm just going to be real transparent in this moment. I got so preoccupied with business that I wasn't spending a lot of time with my daughter. Like I would come, I would go to work <laughs> because I'm a single parent. And so sometimes you feel like you got to do everything and you just don't want to ask for help and stuff. And so I would, I would wake up early, drop my daughter off. Like we wouldn't talk in the morning or anything. Like we legit would just get up, get ready get in the car, I will go to work, work from like eight to five, nine to five, whatever the times are that I'm at work, I would get off, go to a family member's house or whatever, be there, we would be in opposite rooms or whatever else, and I would just be sitting there creating stuff on my phone, I would be sitting there looking up business strategies, different products, different things that I want to sell, different things that I want to do, and like in and out of conversation with family members that are there because I'm just so focused on focused on trying to hustle, just trying to do everything. I would get home and be on my computer and just working and like going through different files, going through different fonts and I mean just doing so much, so many different things. By the time I finished all of that, it would be like eight, nine o'clock. My daughter would be in the bed at 930 dinner. We would eat dinner at, you know, my family member's house or something like that. And every single day was like that for like a while. Like I got so focused on hustling and bustling. I didn't even, I wasn't even there. Like I was there, but I wasn't there, you know? And I would say it probably happened after the breakup because I just felt like, okay, well, now I have to do everything. I got to make sure that I do all of these things. And the whole time God had it, like I didn't have to do anything but be obedient to God and God was going to take care of the rest. I just needed to be intentional and obedient. I didn't have to do hundreds of things every day. I could have just, just done three intentional things every day so that I could be moving forward. I was so busy being distracted by all the other things that when God was telling me to do something, I wasn't giving it everything that I got, you know, and just recently, and I'm only saying this to be transparent because it might help somebody put things into perspective so that they can, they can reorganize and prioritize their life in the way that God sees fit and not their, their way, you know, and so lately I've been doing this thing where I was talking to my grandmother and we were going over different things and she was like, okay, you're forgetting this. You're forgetting that. Cause I was doing so much, like just overwhelmed and just trying to do everything, be everything. And she was like, you need to take a moment. Like my whole family's been saying it for a while, but I was just like, no, I can't stop. If I stop, and then what's going to happen, you know, like I, it's just me. I got to do it. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to get all of these things done. And 
and I'm trusting God, but I'm also I'm I'm trusting trusting ish God because I'm doing the things God wants me to do, but I'm also making sure that I'm doing several things that probably are not even helping. You know, I'm doing things that are just wasting my time. That are that are busy. It's like busy work, but not purpose work, you know? And lately I've been intentional about making sure that I seek God first, that I tell God the plans that I came up with, like for my vision and stuff like that. I give it to God and I ask God for his, like his opinion. Like if he's telling me, yes, you need to do this, this and this, or if he's saying no, you don't need to focus on that. I need you to do this, this and this. So I have direction for my life. And then the next thing that I do, like I make sure that, that I'm good, but I don't just focus on myself. I just do something like, I'll be like, okay, let me take a moment, 15 minutes in prayer or in God's presence or, you know, just being me, not doing anything, not not hustling, not bustling, not doing anything at all. Just sitting there, sitting still in the moment looking out at the trees or whatever it is that I'm doing, just taking a moment so that I could just really just focus my mind on nothing. And then I go and I do stuff with my daughter. So I've been trying to lately do like one thing every day together or like making sure she's good. So instead of me like rushing out of the house and grabbing something quick and going and like just feeling like, I just can't stop to like, okay, God, I'm going to stop. I'm going to do the things that I need to do, but I'm not going to do everything. I'm going to do what I can. And I really have been like, okay, well, I'm trying to find a balance now. Like instead of us just doing everything she wants to do, like today we went and what do we do? We went to this thing for the church. It was for the kids. And then after I left there, I went to my family member's house. And while we were there, we were talking and like I was talking to my family members and them first. Then I went to spend time with my daughter and we we did something and then we decided, oh, we watched two movies together. And usually I don't like to watch like a lot of TV, but I was like, okay, I'm trying to be intentional with spending time. And so we watched this movie that I watched when I was growing up called Good Burger. <laughs> For those of you that know that's like a, a 90s baby or something or 80s baby, you know about Keenan and Kel and you know about Good Burger, you know, home of the Good Burger. Can I take your order? OK, I had to finish it. I couldn't just only say the one line. <laughs> but yeah. And then after we left there, we went to a birthday party that was at the skating rink. And then we came home. But we just kind of talked and just like I was in the whole vibe. I had like I have this I have this R&B gospel like playlist thing on my phone. And so I found one song that I really like. And when we when we were leaving the skating ring, we we're listening to this music and it's so like calming. It's just like it's like listening to Neo Soul, but it's gospel. And it's all about God. And so I'm playing that on the radio as we head home. And it's just like so nice. Then we get home and, it, you know, it's almost bedtime then. But I'm still up because I always take a shower before I go to bed. And I'm sitting there. I'm, I'm praying, you know, before I get ready for bed. And I was just like, I feel like my focus is a lot better now. Like, I'm focused on the right things. I'm not just focused like, okay, God, let me let me hurry up and read this Bible verse and just rush through it because I know I got to read it. Let me, instead of sitting in it so and meditating on the word so God can give me direction, you know, and like in Bible study, instead of like daydreaming and spacing out, let me go ahead and focus in on what it is I'm supposed to be knowing because I have to pay attention because this is something that God is using to give me more instructions or to feed my soul so that I have nourishment so that I'm not just trying to seek something from somewhere else because God is filling me up, you know, and I feel like it's in preparation of the person. Like God is trying to make sure that I'm good, content, that I'm not trying to do anything for anybody else but him, that my focus first is on him, 
that I'm taking care of myself emotionally, physically, my skin, you know, my hair, my body, and it doesn't have to be the most expensive thing, but it's got to be something that I'm doing to show God that I'm, I'm being a good steward of my body, my mind. And no, I'm not doing everything perfect, but I'm also not beating myself up for not being perfect, you know. And on top of that, I could see him moving in my relationship with my daughter. I could see him, like some of the decisions or things that I've been doing, I've been getting like a God's confirmation, like, yes, this is the right decision. Yes, you did good here. Well done, <laughs> you know. <laughs> And it's not that I'm focused on the person at all. Like, I know it'll happen when it happens. I'm I'm fine being alone. Like, instead of me before being like, okay, I'm going to date all of these people. Or I'm going to, you know, if someone asks me out, I'm going to give people a chance. And, you know, let them prove it, whether they are or not about that life, you know, or whatever else. And <laughs> now I just feel like if I meet somebody and they don't, do the things that I would think that they need to do then I'm not like oh man I'm like okay that I know they're not the person anyway so what does it matter <laughs> not only that but then it's like I'm good by myself I don't need this person to be a part of my life like it's not my job to convince them that I need to that they need to be with me it's their job to convince the other way around it's not my job to convince them that they need to be with me. It's their job to convince me that I, that they, you know, deserve a shot. And I, I don't like to put it that way because we're all equal. But, but there's certain people that are grace for you and certain people that aren't. And it's that intentionality thing, you know. I see that. I see, like, the finances thing with budgeting. I see me like doing a whole bunch of different things in my life that just feel like they just are lining up, like God is preparing me for him. He's making sure that my mind is right. He's making sure that my body is right. Like I'm <laughs> certain things that I prayed for. God is like, okay, I'm gonna make sure that I help you out in this area. <laughs> Guys, like, like with my skin, I was like, oh my gosh, God, I'm breaking out. You know, last month I was breaking, was it last month or the month before I was really breaking out hard a lot. And it wasn't like I had like blemishes everywhere. I just had like random pimple here and here. And I'm like, adult acne, really? <laughs> then I was like, God, please bless my skin. Like, I know y'all think it's ridiculous, but I, I pray to God about stuff that I know matters to me. Not that I'm idolized and smooth skin, but I'm like, God, it would be amazing. <laughs> it would be such a blessing if you would make sure that my skin stays good. Like I know it's not always going to be perfect. And I also appreciate it. I pray about stuff for my partner. I'm like, God, can you make sure that this, that he does this? <laughs> And I don't need them to be like perfect at all. Nobody's going to ever be perfect but God. And I know it's not going to be just no disagreements, no nothing. I know we're two totally different people. We're going to disagree. I just pray that God gives me the grace and that he allows me to make the person feel safe and seen. And that the person makes me feel safe and seen. And I always pray that God puts a hedge of protection around this man. That he doesn't allow him to just settle for anything less but his best, but God's best. And that he doesn't get unfocused because the adversary hears your prayers too. And sometimes he'll send you someone that looks like the person that, that God is sending you. But it's just a distraction. And I always pray, God, like allow him to be able to see through that. Like sometimes you think, you know, this is a nice person or whatever and that's the that's the reason why we should be together it doesn't matter if they're nice it doesn't matter if they go to church like I've learned that in the past like 
you can both go to church, but just because you both go to church does not mean that's the person that's God grace for you. He just goes to church. Congratulations. I mean, that is such a amazing thing that he goes to church, but that does not mean anything to, to the man that is grace for me. I mean, too, that doesn't mean anything to my kingdom spell. Like, I'm trying to say this in the right way. It it means something to my kingdom spouse, but that doesn't make him my kingdom spouse because he goes to church. Is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so I have to really be mindful and cognizant of the fact that it doesn't matter what it is that I think my preference is. It matters what I actually need in my life. I wish I could tell you the whole story. God just confirmed so many things for me. So many questions that I had, so many reasons that I had in the past for like, okay, God, but I don't expect the person to do this. And God is like, the man, the man that I have grace for you is going to do this because he's grace for you because he knows like this man probably doesn't even know like the hurt that I went through, but he's going to help heal me in certain areas that I couldn't heal on my own. God mended those broken pieces and this man is going to cover me. But I wouldn't have, I would have never let him in until this moment, you know? And God is showing me that this man is going to make sure that he's going to want to be in a relationship that's full of grace and not just happiness. Because he prefers joy over happiness. This man cares about people so much and I will respect him from the moment that I meet him until the last moment that I take my last breath I always pray that to God too I'm like God no matter what he says no matter how much he gets on my nerves just let me always respect him give him the respect that he deserves as your son And get anything out of me <laughs> that is not going to be helpful for our kingdom relationship. Anything that, you know, was lingering, any generational curses or whatever else that I didn't realize was going to be a burden in the future. Like, just help me remove it before he gets here. Allow me to be in a place of contentment. So no matter what happens, even if you don't, you're still good. Allow me to be satisfied with just you. Like, yes, now I do aspire to be in a relationship, but I'm also content just being with God. If God said it's just me and him for the rest of my life, will I have moments where I, I have a moment? Yes. But I'm honestly content with knowing that God is a part of my life and that's good enough. I don't need to have a person. I get to have a person <laughs> to be a part of my life. That's just a bonus. That's extra, you know? That's not everything. God is not everything, you know? But I don't want to be on here too long. I I know it's been almost an hour, and I haven't done one of these in a long time. And it's so funny because the hour-long videos are always the ones where I'm like, I don't have anything to say. <laughs> and then God's like, want to bet? <laughs> but yeah, God just showed me how this man it's going to lead how he and every time he does it every time God shows me something <laughs> it really brings tears to my eyes and I know you're probably like are you really crying over some man that you don't know <laughs> let me tell you about God <laughs> it's, it's something about God when he tells you something you know it's true you know and It's just like, wow, even for me, God would do this even for me.
Well, let me tell you something. God hears your prayers. Even when you don't see it coming to fruition. Even when you don't see no way how God is going to make it happen. Every time you are going through life and you feel like you want to doubt yourself or you feel like there's no way. Like, why would God do this for me? I promise you, God is the type of God that keeps his promises. I'm not even with this man and I have so much faith in knowing that God is who he says he is. The things that God allowed me to see are just so amazing. It kind of makes you feel like what even made me want to do things my way in the first place. Like, why did I even choose to go any other path but to walk the straight and narrow path? Why did I choose to do anything in my life but the things that God intended for me to do? It really makes you feel like the world makes you feel like you need these things. Like they're, they would ever fulfill you and they don't. I don't know if I could see the, say the D word on here, but... Any type of substance that you're using is never going to fill you up like God. I don't know why I need to say that, but apparently when the person who needs to watch this video is going to watch it, it's going to, it may bless you. Any person out there that's feeling like they had abandonment issues or they, they didn't have one family member or someone step up in the way that they wanted them to in a moment when they needed them, God is that person who could step up for you. Any person who feels like a man or a woman is going to fill the place of emptiness that you have in you, only God can fill that place. Any person out there who's feeling like this job, this title is going to make you be somebody, you are already somebody. You don't have anything to prove to anybody else but God. Stop feeling like you're not enough. You are everything God created you to be. I know life didn't happen the way that you planned. But I promise you it happened the way that God planned. Let God be God. Not all those other things that you thought could ever equal up. God is enough. <laughs> He's enough. I know that was like, it looked a hot mess, but listen, obviously it was the reason why. And now my eyes are like all, like weird. <laughs> <sighs> oh my goodness. God is enough. I see what you did there. Mm. God is enough. 